My name is Jacob Rothman, co-founder and CEO of Perch, and today we're going to give you a quick product tutorial with the help of Nico Ouellette and Connor Bachman. So in front of me, you have your standard Perch kit. We, of course, have our Perch camera system. We have our tablet. Any standard Android or iOS tablet will work. We have our battery pack, so the Perch device can be powered by wall power or our external battery pack. The battery pack has a few magnets in the back, so it can easily be adhered anywhere on the weight rack. We have our tablet mount, which is a double-sided magnetic tablet mount, and then all of our uh, charging and power cables. Perch camera is compatible with almost any weight rack on the market today. There are a few weight racks in which the Perch might not be compatible, and for that we've made a separate rack adapter um, that we'll cover in a separate video. But right now I'll show you how easy it is to install Perch. First thing you'll do is you'll take your Perch product, you'll put it right up to the front of your rack, you'll take the Velcro strap, you'll loop it back on the attachment point, and then loop it back and adhere it to itself. So just like that, you have your Perch product firmly secured in place, really rugged, robust, not going anywhere. Um, we get a lot of questions around why we use Velcro, um, and the reason is just that. It's really rugged, sturdy, and it makes it really, really easy to install your Perch product quickly. There are a few different ways to power your Perch camera. The standard way is to plug the camera directly into wall power. Or if you don't have power outlets readily accessible in your weight room, we have an external battery pack. So the battery pack gives your Perch device 12 hours of continuous use, and it recharges in about three to four hours. It also has ma magnets adhered in the back, which uh, allows you to easily adhere it anywhere on uh, the weight rack. Um, it also has a switch on the top, which allows you to power it on and off in between sessions. So to install it, all you have to do is take the battery, adhere it anywhere on the rack near your perch device, and then take the supplied cable, plug it into the battery, and then plug the other end directly into the perch camera, and then power your battery on. Your perch camera will now power up as if it was connected to the wall. So what do you do? if you want to capture velocity-based training data, but you actually don't have a rack. Maybe you just have a platform where you have a squat stand, for instance. So actually built Perch to be mobile and flexible enough that you don't need to use it with a rack. Um, so all you have to do is you have to take our, our portable battery pack, strap it directly to the camera, and use our uh, provided cable, and all of a sudden Perch is now a mobile solution. So you can take Perch and you can use the flat bottom that we've designed into it to mount that or place it flush on the ground. Then you can prop it up against the wall or use a weight, for instance, to prop it up and then you can use Perch like you would just if it was attached to a rack. But I'll show you exactly what that looks like. I'll hit start, and then I'll do a quick set for you just to show you that it does work. Just like that, capturing the same data as you would if it was mounted to a rack. In this video, we're gonna give you a brief overview of the Perch web app. So whenever you wanna to navigate to it, the URL that you're gonna to go to is app.perch.fit, and that'll take you to the site that we have here on the screen. Whenever you have an account, we'll create it for you, and you should get an email from no-reply at perch.fit with a link in it. That link will take you to a page where you can set your password for the credentials that are emailed to your address. And then from there, you can set the credentials and it should take you directly into the web app, which we have up right now. And then once you have that, you can go ahead and enter those credentials to log in and press the login button. If you ever need to reset your password or if you've forgotten your password, you can always hit this forgot password button and you'll get the same email from no-reply at perch.fit. So once you log in, it'll take you to your default landing page. Um, anytime that you wanna navigate back here, you can go to this Perch logo in the top left-hand corner of the screen. And then from there, you can navigate through the web app. So anything that you need to do for roster management, if you want to look at exports, or if you want to go through the leaderboard, look at your settings, everything will be controlled through this page. A lot of this is going to be more administrative, and anything that you need to do kind of on the back end of your account will be handled through the web app. What we're going to do in this video is show you how to upload users. So the first thing that you're gonna to navigate to is the team button in the top right hand corner here. And that's not gonna stay State University, it'll say whatever your team name is. When you click on that, the first page that you're gonna to go to is the user management page. And this is where you'll manage all of your roster information. So there are two ways that you can import users. There's an individual option as well as a bulk import option. And the way to individually add users is through this create new plus icon right here. And when you click on that, It'll give you grayed out options to add the user's information. So you have your first name and last name, which are both required. You have email, with it, which is optional. And if you want to send information to an athlete, that's what the email will be used for. It's not something that you need to put in, but if you do want to uh, send the information to the athlete, you can enter their email and it'll give you a prompt on whether or not you want to send them an invite. You can also add your height, your weight, and your gender. 
and then the role will stay athlete. And what that means is that they will only have the ability to see their own data. They won't have the ability to see anyone else's data or to edit any information. And then when you're done, just click on the check to save it or click on the X to cancel if you need to start over. The other way that you can import users is through this upload users button with the cloud with the upward facing arrow in it. If you click on that, it'll give you a pop-up and it, where it says click here in blue, that'll download a template for you. So when you click on that, you can see that pops up in the bottom left-hand corner. And then when you click here to upload, you can import the CSV that you played with that you downloaded from that click here link. And once you enter that, it'll tell you that three users have been created or however many users you have in that document. It'll also tell you what teams were created. So you have the ability to bulk import teams on that roster. Uh, and then you can either cancel or confirm that submission. So when we press confirm here, you can see in the background that three users have been added to this roster. So we have Jacob Rothman, Connor Bachman, and Nico Willette. And we have all the associated information that was added through that roster import. We also can edit that information after the fact through this pencil icon in the actions button right here. And one other thing to consider is that we have both an active and an inactive roster. So if players leave the team, graduate, or transfer, different kind of things like that, you can always deactivate them by taking the box next to their name and clicking on the trash can icon in the top right hand corner. And whenever you deactivate a player, you can always reactivate them as well through the same process in the inactive tab. What we're going to talk about in this video is how to add a team. So you can see here across the top that the basketball team was added when we imported the individual users. Another way to add a team individually is through this plus button where it says create team. So when we do that, it'll give us an option to name that team. We'll call this one softball. And when we save that, then you can see that the team is generated. There's no athletes on this roster already. So there's two ways that we can add athletes here. We can either create a new user, which we went over in the last video, or we can add an existing user through this plus icon with the person next to it. So when we click on this button, then you can see that the roster gets pulled up. We'll click on the athletes that we want added and we'll add those users. And you can see that those users get added. Now a big difference that you'll see between the all button and the individual rosters is that when we go into the all tab, you can see along the right hand side, the option that we have for the column is role. And so that role will be associated with whatever you want the athlete to be. When we switch over to the individual rosters, you'll see that, that that column changes to position. And if we wanted to add a position to an athlete, we can click on the edit button in the actions column, and we can click on the pencil here to add a user. So let's say that someone is a pitcher. We can type that in and click the plus. That automatically will be checked off. So we'll hit done, and that's added to the athlete's profile. Always make sure that you save it, otherwise it won't get saved. And if you need to start over, you can always hit that X. Uh, this is a good option to have for any time that you wanna look at athlete data post. So that way, if you wanna segregate different kind of data based on position, then you can look at it based on what you have selected in this column. What we're gonna talk about in this video is how to add groups. So groups are really good whenever you have rack assignments, where if you wanted to log multiple athletes into the tablet at the same time, this is really useful and a good time saver. So the way that you're gonna to get to the group screen is through this view dropdown, where it says user management. We'll click on that and select groups. And so there are none in here because we haven't created any groups yet. You can add groups to the all tab or individually to the teams that you have created. So if we go into the basketball tab and we click plus for make a group, we'll call this group one and save that. And now this group is created with no users in it. So the way that we're gonna add users to that roster is the same plus button with the people icon next to it. And if we click on that, we'll add two users to this group and they'll both show up in this tab. If we need to delete them, you can select the trash can icon where it says remove. And next time we log into the tablet, if we select the groups tab instead of the individuals tab, these two athletes will pull up whenever you have group one selected. In this video, we're going to go through how to select exercise favorites. Favorite exercises are really useful for convenience whenever you want to individualize a list on things that you can display to your athletes, to your staff, to yourself. Uh, these things are very helpful because it'll allow you to select from a list of exercises that you know are going to be performed more frequently than others, or it'll allow you to select different options. So whether that's a press or an Olympic lift or a squat, 
It'll prevent you from having to go through the list and select the individual exercise that you want because everything will be displayed for you. So the way that you're gonna to get to the favorite exercises is through this view option. And if we click on the drop down here from groups, we'll navigate to favorite exercises. So you can see that we have a list of our full roster on the left here of, of the entire catalog of exercises. You can search for things in here. So if we wanted to look for anything that has jerk in it, we have clean and jerk, jerk and split jerk. And then on the right hand side, we have all of our favorite exercises here. So the way that we're gonna favorite those exercises is simply by clicking on this button here where the star is located. And you can see on the left hand side, that star gets highlighted in yellow. And then on the right hand side, back squat gets added to the favorite exercises. And if we ever wanna remove that from the favorite exercises, you can simply do the same thing. Click on the star so that the yellow icon is no longer highlighted and that's no longer listed on the favorite exercises list. And once you have this selected, this will display on the tablet as well, so that whenever you're looking through the menu of exercises that you have, anything that you have selected here on the favorite exercises list will also show on the favorites on the tablet. After you've set your favorite exercises, one thing that we recommend that you do is go and import your one rep maxes. In order to get to that page, we'll go to the view option one more time and click the drop down, and we'll select on the one RMs option here. And it'll take us to a page that has our three favorite exercises automatically pulled up. You can either click on the where are the rest of the exercises button highlighted here in blue, and that'll show all of your exercises where you have an option to select all, deselect all, select just your favorites, or you can tick whatever box that you want. For now, we'll select the favorites. Or you can also click on this configure columns button where it says add or remove exercises and it'll take you to that same screen. And again, you can still search for anything that you have in the search bar up top. So the way that you can enter these one rep maxes are individually or through bulk import. So what we'll do here is you can click on the pencil button to edit and you can add these things individually. And again, these are things that you can look at in pounds or kilos, depending on what your program is based off of. So if you wanted to manually import that, you could do that. And once you, when you're done, just click the check button to save or hit the X button to cancel. The other way to do that is through the import and the export button. So if you click on the export button first, it'll give you the option to export as a CSV or a PDF. Select the CSV option, and you'll see that that CSV gets downloaded here in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. To import that after you've entered the one rep maxes into that CSV, you can click the button next to it with the upward facing arrow. And when you click on that, you can choose the file that you just created. And so we'll select that, we'll save it, and now you can see that this information gets filled in based on what we had in the document. This is gonna be really useful for different things. One area where it becomes really useful is on the tablet app, because if you're lifting based on these one rep maxes, or if you're going off a percentage-based system, if you type in the percentage that you wanna use, so let's say that you're going at 65%, the tablet app will give you an option to import that in the weight editor screen, and based on the one rep max that you have selected here for the, any given exercise, it'll tell you what weight to put on the bar. Uh, we're working on something that will make that happen dynamically, but that's something that'll be available in the future and is not ready right now. Now that we've gone through all the options in the view dropdown here, we're gonna show you how to go through some of the different settings that we have on the web app. To get to the settings page, you'll click on the logo in the top right-hand corner of the screen, and it'll give you a dropdown with four options. For this, we're gonna to wanna to navigate to the settings option, and you have a few things that you can do in this page. You can rename your team, so we have our state university here. You can upload a few different images, so your thumbnail, you can do your banner image, and then you can change the default uh, unit for display. So the thumbnail image is gonna show up anytime that you go into the State University page or your organization's page. Uh, the banner image will show whenever you display the leaderboard. Um, and then the units for display obviously will be whatever kind of uh, weight unit you have for your, uh, for your weight room. And then whenever you're done, if you make any changes, just make sure that you hit save. We also have the option here to upgrade any access plans or support tiers. So if you have any options or any questions about that, uh, feel free to hit the upgrade button or reach out to your, your sales contact through Perch. We also have the API token access down here. So that's something that's tiered. And if you wanna pull things into different softwares such as an AMS or into an internal database, that's what an API token would be used for. Uh, you can generate a token by clicking here where it says name and we'll call this test. And you see once you start typing that create a new token highlights instead of being grayed out. 
When you click on that, it'll give you a pop-up and it tells you here, if you lose this token, we can't recover it for you. So anytime that you generate that, make sure that you're clicking on this copy button right here and you're saving that to somewhere safe because once you exit this screen, you're not gonna be able to access that again. And if you need to access that down the road in order to pull information or if it gets lost and the AMS or internal database needs to access that token again, you'll need to make sure that you have that saved. So once you have that copied and saved somewhere like an Excel doc or a Word doc or a notepad, you can click I've saved this token and you see that it gets generated down here. So you have your token ID, you have your token name and when that was created. If you ever need to delete that, you can click on the delete button right here. And if you need to create another one, you can do that through the same methodology where you just type in the name and you click create a new token. If you click on the question mark button here, it'll give you a little bit more information about what an API token is. And it'll also give you links to our terms of service and our privacy policy. Another option that you have through the menu in the top right hand corner is what we call manage devices. So when you click on that and you navigate to the manage devices screen, it'll take you into a different page. This is gonna be really useful for whenever you wanna do things like transfer presets or update your different devices. So you have in the top right hand corner, your rows and your columns. So you can use this to make sure that everything is set up in the same way that your weight room is set up. So right now, we have two rows and we have six columns. So if we had two rows of eight columns, then we can click the plus button twice and now we have those eight columns. And again, you can make this reflect the way that your weight room is set up. So if perch 119 is actually in the bottom right hand corner, you can drag and drop and that will take that rack and it'll assign the, the unit that you have associated with that rack. And you can see that there's an icon associated with all these different devices. What you can do to see what that icon means is click on this question mark button next to where it says your devices and it'll show you the different legends that we have for what those icons mean. So when in doubt, click on that and it'll tell you what the icon means or feel free to reach out to support on the Perch team. One major aspect of using this screen is transferring presets from one camera to another. So one of the biggest benefits that we have is this transfer preset button so that you only have to set the camera angles for one camera. So what you'll do on the floor is let's say that you set the presets for all of your cameras on demo one. Instead of having to go through every single rack and adjust the presets individually for each exercise for each rack, you can use this transfer presets button. And when you click on that, you see that the menu changes a bit. So we have the cancel button if we need to go out of this screen and then the transfer button is grayed out because we don't have anything selected. But the transferring presets from and to will tell you what you're doing. So if we said that we set up all the presets on demo one, we'll tick that box first, and you'll see that that first box where you're transferring presets from will populate with that camera. So we can see demo one here. And then as soon as we're ready, we can select the other presets or the other cameras that we want to transfer those presets to. So as we start to select those boxes, you'll notice that in the two box, they're populating. So once we do that, we select all our other devices, and you'll see that the transfer button is now highlighted and we'll click on that. And now it'll tell you that the devices will receive the presets shortly, which means that they're transferring. Now, if they're offline, that's not that big a deal because as soon as the cameras are connected to Wi-Fi again and they have that green check mark, then they'll receive those presets. So no big deal if the cameras aren't online at the time that you're transferring the presets. And then the other option that you have on this page is to update devices. So. One thing that we do best here at Perch is we're dynamically changing and always improving our system and the way that our tracking algorithm works. So the way that that goes through is in the form of software updates on your camera. And anytime that we push a software update out, you'll have the ability to update it individually on each tablet, on each camera. But if you wanted to update all of your cameras at the same time, you can do it here through this update devices button. So if you don't have the option to do that, it probably means that your devices are all up to date. Always make sure that your devices are online uh, and that way you can see what software version that they're operating on right now. What we can do also is we can click on any of these cameras and it'll give us a pop-up of what that camera is, is running in terms of the software version now. So when we click on demo one, we see the status here in the top right hand corner. We can also change the name of this device by clicking rename here in the bottom right hand corner. So if we wanted to call this rack one instead of demo one, we can do that here. Um, and then you have a little bit more information, including the software version here. 
So if Perch support is ever asking for a software version, this is one way to do it, or you can also grab it on the, the tablet individually. Another aspect that we have on the web app here is the leaderboard. This is gonna allow you to help drive intent with your athletes so that they can compete with each other even more than they would just on the floor. So when we click on the leaderboard tab here in the top right hand corner of the screen, you'll see this banner image that we set in the settings. And then you also have two different leaderboards here on the left and on the right. So the way that you're gonna adjust those is through this filter icon in the top left hand corner of the screen. And when you do that, you get a pop-up you have an option to select either one or two columns and you can make those columns filtered individually or you can show them um, as filtering the same things. So when we choose to filter each column individually, you can choose different filters for these exercises and teams and groups and you can name them different things. So for the left column, let's say that we're looking at power and on the right column, let's say we're looking at velocity. So we rename those and maybe we want to look at different time windows. So you have the ability to look at all time or you can look at the last two weeks this month. You can make it a custom time window. For now, we'll keep it at all time. Then you have the option to choose some of those different filters like we were talking about. So you can select your exercise filter if you want to just look at back squat. If you want to just look at barbell row, you can look at some of the different exercises that you have selected. And you can see once we have that exercise filter selected, on the bottom of the screen, instead of saying all exercises like it does on the right hand column here, it'll isolate to back squat. And if we ever wanna remove that filter, then you see that there's an X on the right hand side of this and we can remove that to show all exercises. Same thing with teams and groups. So we have the groups and the teams that we've set up already. So if we select basketball, you'll notice that when we hit done, one other pop-up that showed up is the positions, and those are the positions that we added to the user profiles when we talked about how to add users individually or through bulk import. So when we select that, we have all the different positions that are associated with that team. So if we just wanted to look at the point guards or if we just wanted to look at the forwards, we can do that as well. And again, if you ever need to remove those filters, you can select the X next to their, um, their filters. You can pick what different metrics you want. So if you wanted to look at your best rep of the set or if you wanted to look at your set average, and then you can look at any of the nine metrics that we record. So that's mean and peak velocity, mean and peak power, uh, eccentric mean velocity, eccentric time, and the three explosive movements, time to peak power, time to peak velocity, velocity at 100 milliseconds. So you can filter the leaderboard off of any of those nine metrics. And then you also have different filters here to eliminate any weights or percent of the one rep maxes that you don't wanna see. So if you have your athletes, for example, recording warm-up sets and they fall below a certain absolute weight, like 135 pounds, or if they fall below a certain relative weight, so anything below 65% of your one rep max, you can filter those out of the leaderboard so that they don't uh, clog up your data by adding those here. So if we added 135, or if we added 65%, you can save that here. And again, you can make this different things for different columns. So like we have here selected on the left-hand side, we have it labeled as power. So we'll call that peak power. And then we have mean velocity here on the right-hand side. And then as soon as you save that, it should apply to your leaderboard. So for the sake of simplicity, we'll just remove these filters and we'll switch over to one column. And once we hit save, you can see that in the background here, we have our perch demo user and we have the associated value that we selected in the filter. This screen can easily be cast to any different screen that you have in your weight room. So if you have TVs listed, it's a good opportunity for you to put that up on the TVs and it'll allow the athletes to look and see where they are on the list. And this is a really good way to drive competition and allow for athletes to drive more intent with their lifts and compete with each other and with themselves. Another option that you have for exporting data or for looking at data after the lifts is the export button in the top right hand corner. So when we click on that, it'll take us to a blank screen. And what we'll have to do is we'll retrieve that data. But before we do that, we'll look into some of the filters. So you have your date filters here on the right. So what date you wanna start with, what date you wanna end with. You can always select different dates. We'll go all the way through to today. You have your different filters, similarly to what you've seen before. So if we wanna pick a certain exercise, you can do that. We'll leave that blank for now. If you're trying to key in on a specific user, you can do that as well or if you wanna look at a specific team or group. And again, when we select basketball, then the positions filter drops in. You can look at different positions as well. 
for right now, we'll remove those filters. And again, you can click on the X just to make sure that you're removing those filters here in the filters button down below. When you're ready to see that data after you've generated data on the floor, you can click retrieve data and it'll show you a few different things. So you have a count of how many exercises you've done. So how many sets of each exercise. And then you have a count in terms of a line chart in the sets by week here with the date along the X axis and a count of the number of sets on the Y. And you can see down below that there's information populated, but there's always more that you can look at. And the way that you're gonna do that is through this button in the top right hand corner here that's called configure columns. So when we click on that, it gives us a menu of all the different options that we have. And these are the nine metrics listed. So again, that's mean and peak velocity, mean and peak power, eccentric mean velocity, eccentric time, and the three explosive movements, time to peak velocity, time to peak power, and velocity at 100 milliseconds. So if I wanna pick and choose those different metrics that I wanna look at individually, I can do that. I can deselect those through the X, or I can select all through the double check. And once I have that, you can see it in the background. Those options are here now. And then the main columns on the left-hand side are more administrative. So if you wanna look at weight in pounds versus if you wanna look at weight in kilograms, if you want the percent of the one rep max that's selected, if you wanna know whether or not bands or chains were used for accommodating resistance, if you have different comments that were left on the sets, anything that you might wanna look at in the main columns, you can pick and choose those as well, or you can select the double check or the X. And then you also have up at the top, you have your set average and your set max. So that'll tell you either what the set average was for the number of reps that you performed or what the top rep was, or you can tick the box that says show each rep. And so that'll spit out a rep number. And then for any unilateral exercise that we have, it'll give you the limb as well. So if you're looking at something like a split squat or an RFE, uh, you can look at that as well. And if you hover over the question mark here, it'll, it'll give you a little bit more of an explanation of that. And then when we click done, you can see in the background here that there's information for all the different exercises and athletes that we have. So we can see in this first row here, we have perch demo, their user ID is 1301 and what position they're associated with. You can see where their body weight is. And then we can see all the different things associated with that set and with that rep. So we can see what the weight was. We can see what percentage of their one rep max hours performed at, uh, how many reps were in the set, were chains and bands used, and then we can see all the different metrics that we selected here. We can also switch that to aggregations. So if we click on configure columns again, you can see on the right hand side, there's a tab here for aggregations instead of sets. We, get, we have the ability to aggregate by tonnage, by volume, or by number of sets, and then again in weights or, kilo, or in pounds or kilos. And then if you want to aggregate by exercise, you can tick this box, but it's only going to let you do one at a time and then it'll tell you that basically when you click on the, the question mark icon here to the right of that. And then when you hit done, that information will be displayed in the background. So the way that you're gonna export this is through the cloud icon with the downward facing arrow here. And when you click on that export, it'll give you the option to export as a P PDF, which will be similar to what you see on the screen displayed here, or you can export as a CSV and that'll take you into Excel where you can mess around with the data you can put together player profiles, kind of play around with different things that you have in options in Excel. But if you have any questions or areas that you want to explore more and you want to talk to anyone at Perch, please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. Today we're going to cover off the Team Insights page. This is a functionality that we added so that you have the ability and the capability to look at some of your team and positional information without having to pull any of that out of the export and put it into Excel. What you'll see here is you have some filters up at the top, so you can choose any of your date ranges as well as a custom date range. You can choose any of your teams or positions to analyze as well as individual exercises. Underneath that, we have some benchmarks and some indicators based off of those benchmarks. And you can tell what the, the number in white is based on the date. We also have sets by exercise type and sets by day. And so that'll show you a little bit of a breakdown of volume and where that lies. We have something called time and velocity zones. And this is a stacked column that'll show you some of the different volume that you have within individual volume zones or strength zones based on set average. Underneath that, we have weight by velocity zone. So a similar chart to what we have above, but in this one, it'll allow you to really isolate how different areas or different strength zones are trending based on the average weight lifted in that zone. And then underneath that, we also have mean velocity over time. If you change the metric, which it'll show you any of the nine metrics that we have available as well as weight. 
then you can see that that switches so the title is now reflective of what we have selected for the metric and that'll show you the trends over time for any given metric and then underneath that we also have the set history so this is similar to the export so you can see some of the different metrics that you have for any given lift or any given athlete one thing that this allows you to do is edit some of your sets on the web, which is a very similar functionality that we have on the tablet. But instead of having to go to each individual tablet and find the set, you can come into the web app, pop it out, and edit that set, whether that means that it has a ghost rep, maybe we need to change the weight, or maybe we need to change the athlete. We also have the additional functionality of the athlete profiles, which if you wanted to get to those, you can get there from the set history tab by clicking on the athlete's name, and we'll go over that in a different video. We're gonna go over the athlete profile in this video, and to start out, we're gonna show you how to get there. First thing you can do is navigate to your user management page by clicking on the organization's name in the top right-hand corner of the screen. Go to the athlete that you wanna look at and click on their name. That'll take you directly into the overview page, and you can see the athlete's name, height, weight, and all of the groups that they're associated with. This is very similar to the insights page that we have. So you have some of your benchmarks and some of your indicators based on what you have selected in the date field. Then you also have the sets by exercise type and the sets by day, which again is broken down by heat map. So the darker colors indicate a higher volume or a higher total number of sets and the lighter colors indicate a lower number of sets. Then we have weight by velocity zone, which is very similar to what we see on the insights page as well. And it'll really let you key in on some of the different trends that you have within each strength zone based on the average weight lifted for that strength zone. And then we have a similar set history page, which the difference here is that instead of showing the athlete name on the left hand side, it'll show you the date and the time of any given set. Then if we switch over to the exercise tab, this will let you look into some of the different metrics for the athlete for any given exercise that you have. And so you can switch this based on what you have lifted in the given time frame. So we'll switch this to back squat. And so you can see some of the different benchmarks and indicators for this specific exercise. You can see what your entered one rep max is, as well as some benchmarks for that athlete for all time bests, whether that's mean power, what the heaviest lift was, or what the mean velocity is. And that'll change based on what exercise you have selected. Then we have the indicated metric based on this exercise. And you can see that we have all nine metrics that we have available there as well. There are two options to look at. You have relative based on a percent of a one rep max, as well as absolute based on a weight zone. And similarly to the chart that we saw on the last page, this will let you isolate some of the different strength zones that you have, or you can reselect them by ticking the box again. Then underneath that, we have the load velocity profile. So you can see some of the different data points, what the weight lifted was and what the speed at that weight was, as well as a trend line. And you can see what the R squared was, as well as a predicted one rep max. If you wanted to compare this to a different time frame, you can click on the select comparison button and choose a different time frame so that you have a comparison of what that time frame was. So we're looking at last three months in blue versus the last 30 days for the dashed white line. And you can compare and contrast what the predicted one rep max for those time frames would be. Next, we have time and velocity zone, which is very similar to what we saw on the page before, but instead of looking at it in a stacked column chart, this one will be in a histogram. And the bigger functionality here that you can see is that we have all sets, which will show you any set regardless of whether or not there's a goal there. And then if you switch over to goal sets, this will show you whether or not there's actually goals with targeted sets. So this will allow you to see adherence. So were there a certain amount of targeted sets for the actual sets that were recorded, or were we actually hitting the zones that we wanted to? And then last but not least, we have another set history chart with the same functionality. So if you wanted to pop this out, you can click on this button again and say, I need to change this athlete's name or I needed to change the weight and you can save that. Once you've got your camera powered up and on the rack, we're going to go ahead and load up our tablet app. Our tablets we're compatible with are both Android or iOS, depending on your preference. We're gonna demo here on an iOS tablet. Once you open up your Perch app, you're gonna be prompted to log in and you're gonna to wanna to use your admin credentials that you created on the actual web app as well. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and hit go and it'll log me in. Now I have to connect my camera. On an Android tablet, this is gonna automatically reconnect once you've done this in your tablet settings. On an iOS tablet, you're gonna to have to reconnect this every time that you reboot that camera. That's just an Apple setting, standard for an Apple user. I'll hit connect. 
select an accessory screen will pop up and then my camera will pop up right then and I can go ahead and select it and it will go ahead and pair. You can tell that the camera is paired to the tablet here when I see my start screen or I can actually hit the settings button on the bottom right hand side and I can see the connected camera there as well. We can also verify the connectivity here in the bottom left hand side there's a camera icon and if I tap that I can see that my camera is connected to Wi-Fi and all my data is connected to the cloud as well. I can check for updates here and again of course you can update your cameras directly on the web application as well if preferred. And then to connect camera to Wi-Fi in the bottom right hand side of the settings icon you can actually select the Wi-Fi button here and uh, select to allow your tablet to share Wi-Fi credentials to your actual camera. We do want to make sure that the camera is connected to Wi-Fi as well because all of that data will be able to be uploaded, will be able to troubleshoot, and you'll be able to get updates to your camera provided it is connected to Wi-Fi. To make sure that we're capturing really quality data, we need to ensure that the entire field of view of our lift is being captured by the camera. In order to do that and calibrate the camera, there's an exercise preset screen on the tablet that we'll need to go through. Now you can calibrate one camera in your entire weight room and transfer those presets to the rest of your devices as was shown on the web application. In order to set the camera calibration, we're gonna click the camera calibration button on the bottom right hand side of that screen. And you'll be able to see that for this back squat exercise where the camera is pointing. You can see that the barbell is in the bottom of this field of view here. It really doesn't matter where the camera is seeing the barbell if it's on the rack. We want to make sure that as we're moving through that full range of motion, we're capturing that really good data. So in order to calibrate the camera, I'm going to go ahead and unrack the barbell, step to where I typically will lift, and then move through the full range of motion. And if I can see that the bar is found through that full range of motion, we know that's a really good setting for that camera to be angled at. If I need to change the camera angle, I'll go ahead and adjust up or down, and it will tell me whether or not that bar is lost or found throughout that. I'll go ahead and hit save, and then every time I select back squat from here on out, it's gonna revert back to that camera angle. And again, those are the pre uh, presets that I can transfer to the rest of my devices. Next up, I wanna walk you through all of the tablet app settings. So on the bottom right-hand side, there's a settings icon. If I tap that, this will pop up. It'll tell you your admin account that is currently logged into this tablet. You can switch between pounds or kilos for your weight unit, depending on your preference, uh, right here on the actual tablet. Again, we can see that we can do that in the web app as well. We've got an auto mode timer. So you can always click the question mark icon here in order to verify what that actually means. But auto mode is essentially the amount of time that the camera is going to wait in between reps before it assumes the weight has been racked and automatically saves that set to that user profile and moves on to the next user. That timer will not begin until it sees one rep underneath a new user. Our logout timer is gonna wait for 15 minutes currently to uh, elapse before it automatically logs users out so that you don't have to come around throughout the day and log people in or log people out. It'll automatically take care of that for you. Our set stop timer, somewhat similar, it's basically going to use uh, the amount of inactivity on a set once a set has been started to determine whether or not that set should end uh, and keep your data super clean on the back end. For connectivity, we reviewed this earlier, but ultimately that's going to tell you what camera this tablet itself was connected to. The camera and tablet Bluetooth pairing is a one-to-one -one pairing and that's typical for this. And then we can also see the power and Wi-Fi um, options for our connected camera and then we can also see uh, if we want to rename any device or log out entirely from that admin account. Once you've logged your admin account in you won't have to log out. We typically don't recommend that you do. Any user associated with your profile will be able to be logged in here onto this tablet as well. Now that we've gone through logistics we're going to talk about how to actually set up your tablet for lift for the day. So logging in is going to be a huge part of that and the way that we do that, again, once your admin profile is logged into this account, any user associated with that admin organization is gonna be able to be logged in here on the actual tablet. The way that you do that is in the upper left-hand side, there's a login button, I can tap that, and I can either log in individual users or I can log in entire groups. So we reviewed why groups are important for rack assignments or anything like that. If I wanted to, I could pop over here and log in an individual user, or I can log them out and then log in entire groups as well. 
Groups are relatively dynamic in that you can actually add additional users to this tablet. So let's say your groups are switched up for the day, you can add additional users. Someone didn't show up that day, you can remove them as well. So I can go ahead and log somebody out and log an additional user in here as well. You'll see that underneath this perch demo user, they're highlighted in blue and there's a barbell with a percentage icon underneath that user. That's indicating that for this specific exercise, back squat, this load of 45 pounds equals that percentage, so 15% of that user's entered in one rep max on the web application. Changing the load is really simple. As we just reviewed, you can actually indicate a percentage of a specific rep max for a specific exercise. And the way to do that is gonna be where it says 45 pounds right now. If I tap that, this load selector screen will come up. We do try to make barbell math as easy as possible for the users. So you can add plates and you'll notice that the percentage of a rep max actually ch changes for that user that has a 1RM entered into the back end. Or I can actually type in a specific load and again, that will change as well. And the last way that we can do this is through entering a percentage of a rep max. So let's say I wanna work in 80% today of everyone's 1RM. I can type in 80% and all of that data is going to upload, provided that user has an entered in one rep max. If they don't, so let's say myself in this upper right, upper left hand side here, I don't have an entered in one rep max, I can actually change the load specifically for myself. Right now, the load is changing for everybody included. If I want, I can actually select myself, and if I'm highlighted, that means that I'm changing the load specifically for me, and I can type in a specific load, and that will be assigned exclusively to me and the other user logged in here will have a load assigned exclusively to them. If I wanna change it for everybody at once, I can easily hit the all button. And again, all of that information will change for everybody collectively. When we first installed our camera, we calibrated it for every exercise that we're gonna be using Perch 4. And the way that you select exercises is gonna be where it says back squat, I can tap that button and I can choose any and all of my exercises. Now we do default to our favorites uh, menu if you have favorites input on the actual web application side of things. This just makes it a lot easier for you to navigate through your entire exercise library, which is fairly robust. We do categorize by type of movement as well, and you can always use the search icon on the top of that screen too. The camera angle again is gonna be dictated by the exercise selected. So let's say I'm gonna do a hang snatch. If I select that, the camera will actually snap out. And if I go back to our back squat, let's say, or a bench press, it's gonna angle right down because it knows that the camera is going to be pointing there to see the barbell move through that full range of motion. I'll pop back to box squat and pop over here into our back squat. And then again, that camera changes with each exercise selected. One of the best parts about velocity-based training is that you're always aiming for a specific goal. On the Perch tablet app, you can actually set goals and see if you're attaining them rep to rep. The way you do that is where it says add a goal. I can tap that. And we've got four different distinct types of goals. We've got our zone goals, which are based on mean velocity. We have our drop goals, which are based on a percentage drop of mean velocity. We've got our time goals, which are ranges for eccentric time, so the actual lowering of the movement. And then we also have ballistic goals, which are ranges for peak velocity. If I wanna set a goal that we already have preloaded into this, I can actually just tap it and hit done. If I wanna add a manual goal, I can pop into this, hit plus manual goal, and I can add a min, a max, or both. And then I can change the actual goal just by dragging it with my finger. For time, this is gonna be any specific time interval above a specific time. So if you're aiming for a five second eccentric, you're gonna to wanna to set this for five seconds. Anything above that goal will be in blue. Anything below it, a rep will show up red. So you get visual and auditory feedback as to whether or not you're hitting that goal. That's true for all of these goals that you can set. For our drop, it's gonna be five, 10, 15, or 20% of your first or best rep, depending on your preference. And again, you can always set a manual goal there as well. And then for our ballistic goals, typically this is gonna be just a minimum and anything above it, you're gonna be in that, in that good green zone. You can always set a maximum as well and make sure that you're staying within a specific range. The last thing I wanna show you is the actual settings for the goals on the upper right hand side. If I tap that, you can actually choose to see a different color for fast reps. So fast reps will show up gold, slow reps will show up red, and good reps will show up blue or in that green zone. 
and you can also enable sound effects. So you can hear a ding if you're within that good zone. You can hear an error noise if you're outside of it as well. Now that we've done all of our pre-lift logistics, it's time to actually use Perch to lift. I can pop over here and hit start. An empty bar graph is gonna pop up and as, as I generate data, reps are gonna show up as individual bars on this bar graph. For any kind of strength-based movement, we default to mean velocity and for any kind of Olympic or ballistic-based movement or jump, we actually will default to peak velocity. We do have nine different metrics that we're outputting in live time and you can actually choose what output you want regardless of whatever goal that you have set. So I can tap here where it says mean velocity and I can choose any of these nine metrics as my readout. So I can choose mean velocity, I can choose mean power, and that's gonna show up in watts. I can choose peak velocity, again in meters per second, or peak power, again that'll show up in watts. We also have time to peak velocity, time to peak power, and velocity at 100 milliseconds, so that initial concentric portion of the movement, so we're capturing that stretch reflex data point. And our last two are eccentric mean velocity and eccentric time. So we are capturing the time under tension principles uh, through perch as well. I'll tap out of this and we reviewed setting goals. And if I want to add a goal to this, it'll actually show up as a green band here. So let's say I'm aiming for my strength speed zone. If I hit done, that green band is going to show up. That's indicating what that goal set actually is. As I lift, reps will show up and be indicative of whether or not I'm in that zone, outside of it, or too high. What that looks like here is going to be a fast rep, a good rep, and a slow rep. So you can see that we get that visual and auditory feedback as we lift with perch, provided we have a goal set. Completing a set is gonna to be to hit complete and save. And then that set is gonna show up as its own individual tile categorized by exercise and by athlete. All of that will get uploaded to the cloud and stored in your web application. If ever there's an error, something like a ghost rep or a missed rep, you can report that really easily and we'll be able to see it on the back end so that we can help you troubleshoot. It might be a camera angle issue, it might be a tracking issue, we can help resolve it relatively quickly. Reporting errors is pretty simple and you can do that on a set by set basis or once you've saved a set, you can do it retroactively as well. The way that you're gonna do that is tapping into the set and I can pop in here and actually hit the error button. I can select ghost rep if that was the issue. I can select missed rep if that was the issue. Values seem wrong if that was the issue or another issue and then I can add a comment as well. Once I hit save, there's gonna be an exclamation point in that set itself and that's gonna indicate on the back end for us at headquarters to be able to monitor it, troubleshoot it, and help you resolve those issues. We mentioned auto mode in the settings. The way that we're actually gonna enable that is the fast forward button to the right of the start button. So over here, if I hit that fast forward button, the tablet will tell you that auto mode is on, and that means that we are now waiting for a specific amount of time to elapse in between reps before the camera and tablet will automatically save that set to a user and move on to the next. Auto mode again is in the settings icon on the bottom right hand side. Right now it's set for 10 seconds. I'm gonna change this to six. And then I'm gonna hit start. Again, that auto mode timer will not start until it sees one rep underneath a new user. So I can hang out here for as long as I want and it's not actually going to save anything and move on to the next person until it sees data generated. If I wanna start that timer, all I have to do is lift a rep. So I can step back, get a rep in, and now a timer has started. If I get another rep in within that six seconds, that timer will restart and restart and restart with each subsequent rep. Only once I've racked that weight, it will automatically save that set once six seconds has elapses and move on to the next user. Now the perch demo is up. And as soon as they step up and start generating data, again, that timer will restart. I'll pop in here and generate a little bit of data for the perch demo. I'll just give him two reps and rack it. And again, that will automatically save and move on to the next person. This eliminates tablet touches, so athletes don't have to interact with the tablet in between sets. You can just keep your weight room running really, really smoothly and very efficiently with our auto mode timer. 
One of the biggest benefits of Perch being a camera-based system is that our tracking is contextual based on where we're expecting to see the barbell positioned. So we've got something called automated ghost rep deletion or tracking where we don't even pick up ghost reps that other systems may. So for example, I'm about to do a hang clean. Typically, you see the hang clean happen right about the knee and finish in that catch position. Now, the barbell is on the ground right now, and so the camera actually will not pick up a rip when you pick that barbell up off the ground, which is great, so it keeps your database super clean. I'll show you an example. Right now, we've got hang clean selected on the tablet. I can hit start. Again, that empty bar graph is gonna pop up and we're defaulting to peak velocity because this is an Olympic lift. When I pick this bar up off the ground, which typically would register a rep on other systems, we're not actually going to register anything, which is great. Again, it keeps your data clean. As soon as I start actually generating data, that's when we're gonna see reps pop up. But again, the ability to differentiate between what is and is not a rep automatically keeps your database super clean and keeps Perch operating efficiently. Once you've generated data, again, all of your sets are gonna be stored by exercise and by athlete and sent up to the cloud where it'll be stored in the web application. The problem is if you're on the ground, that's not gonna be super easily accessible. So we do have a way to look at historic data directly on the tablet. The way that we're gonna do that is in the upper right hand side, there's a button called month. I can actually tap into that and I can see how many sets were generated on previous days in the month. I can tap into those and I can look at the set summary for that directly here on the actual tablet. I can then flip back to today and change my load accordingly so that you don't have to monitor your athletes regularly on the floor. They can access their historic data with Perch directly on the tablet under their user profile. Thanks so much for the time today. If you'd like to learn more, please reach out to your Perch representative or sales at perch.fit. Thank you. Mm -hmm.